all right welcome back to cnc equipment's youtube channel we're back on hunter's highboy project today aren't we that's right last video you guys seen us building up this 460 it's under a trash bag now we're waiting on push rods we got those ordered they should be in today so maybe later on this video we can uh install those and finish the top end of that motor up but uh hunter's been busy hard at work you guys seen the last video throwed a couple clips in there they got the uh whole undercarriage painted got undercoat under it got the firewall painted looking really nice this is back the original factory color what was that color called nectarine. nectarine kind of a cool color i think the next year they named it cinnamon brown or something but uh hunter's been busy on the front end he's got new rotors new calipers uh repacked all the bearings went through everything um we got new power steering lines all that stuff you guys see us we put those added leaves under the front of there so new shocks you've been busy hunter's been doing all this himself too so i've been busy helping the guys in the shop but what are we working on now training rebuilding we got the uh new process 435 transmission house thing we did stick the thing in the parts washer you guys remember when we pulled this thing out it was covered nasty it was definitely leaking wasn't it yeah so basically all we're doing is pulling it apart we're just throwing some seals and gaskets in it kind of simple easy stuff here so um we've already got the uh front input shaft pulled off of it there there's a little seal inside of here we're going to pop out um and they got gasket shims here we got to get it kind of shimmed up in the right place we don't want to pull this input shaft out because i guarantee there's a bunch of little needle bearings under here it's going to fall out and we're not really the thing was shifting fine so we're not going to pull it apart right it right. shifted fine it was quiet we were just talking about how much more simpler that thing is than that dodge transmission that i rebuilt just a little bit a lot simpler but we're not going to tear it apart because, like I say, she's perfect and fine. There's no sense of messing with it. We're just fixing uh, leaks and stuff. But this is the input shaft seal, and it is hard. Feel that, Hunter, how hard that seal is. You can't even put your fingernail in it. Dang it. <laughs> so whenever you feel it, i got a seal like that, and you can't uh, fingernail when you dig into it. It's been in there probably since new. So transmission uh, seems original. I think it was stamped 76. It's still got the Ford, uh, Ford part number painted on there. It's pretty cool, isn't it? So uh, we're going to grab some seals and gaskets. We've got a gasket kit here from Felpro for the transmission. we got some seals too we ordered. So we're going to gonna get to work on this. We've got the bell housing separated off it. We're going to get all stuff out, paint it, and all that good stuff. So you guys remember from the first video, this truck had a 351 modified in it. And uh, this is the same transmission bell housing, the same bolt pattern. The 351, 400, 429, 460 has the same bolt pattern so we're able to reuse that i think we may have to clearance this uh plate out a little bit for the 460 right here i believe so and we should have a clutch coming for it too um from l l products today um so yeah we're getting there find us a seal how are we gonna get this little bugger out of there no be careful of that bearing race you want to keep doing that and see what i'm doing there you go. Oh, I do. Just put your screwdriver in there and twist it sideways like you see. Do that. Yeah. Alright, Hunter got a seal in there and everything while I was away. I had to deal with the customer. So, you put the uh, cone back on there. You guys see we had a stack of shims in there. They're just paper gaskets, basically. So, I don't know how these are supposed to be checked for sure, but we put it in there uh, dry with no shimmy, so he's kind of measuring some uh, gap here. We're going to kind of take an even even measurement. What are you thinking you got there? Uh, 15,000. That's 15. So we're going to see what kind of gap he's got and then uh, kind of adjust the gaskets to that and then put her together. These are all different. You got thick and thin ones here.
All right, I like how that feels. There's probably a uh, setting on there, but going off feel, I think that feels pretty good, Hunter. All right, we're gonna put this last little thin one in there. Once we got it tightened up, I didn't like the way it felt, so just to be on the safe side. They included three of them with the kit, didn't they? Yeah. I'll try that and see how that feels. Big carbon freight. Big ol' yoke. Get that gasket cleaned off there. I'll put a new seal in here and we'll be brand new. Are we doing this one? Yep. You can take this one off. Yeah, you sure can. You want to take that one off too? Should be fine. Nice. Alright, when Hunter popped this back cover off here, it's full of needle bearings. So we've got to uh, put some grease in and repack those. He's putting a new seal in the tail housing over here. I'm getting the old one out. Trying to, at least. Trying to. It's going. Is it? Oh, you just blew a hole in your seal. Dang it, Bob. Is that on fast? No, I'll just speed it up. Need more grease than that. You got someone here too. You can. All right, Hunter's getting that tightened back up. We did have to uh, order the seal. We had the wrong one, so it should be here later. But I think we can go ahead and put this tail housing back on here. So I get the gasket for it. It's got that drain back hole to line up. Yeah, yeah, put some Loctite. So we're using Loctite 515 sealer on there. Put that on there and tighten it up. Then we can uh, put the seal in later. You got what a PTO cover on the other side, and that's about it on this thing, ain't it? Hunter, what are you doing? Did your push rod show up? Yeah, this morning. Big old 3 8 push rods. Those look good. You guys remember in the last video we measured for these things. Hunter's getting all the uh, Trick Pro Flow roller rockers installed. You got your transmission painted over here, didn't you? Yeah. We'll take a peek at it. Looking good. Just in the valve lash. Just in the valve lash. So you're going a half turn. Crank them down till they touch and go in a half turn, right? Yep. So what he's doing, he's rolling the motor around. You guys can see that lifter sticking up there. It's got that valve compressed so he knows that one's fully closed. So he's adjusting those, marking them with the marker. Looking good, looking good. Well, it looks like Christmas time here. I got some Made in USA L and L products headers. Look at those. You like those? I mean, that's like legit stuff. 
in USA. I got uh, more brackets and parts. So if you guys are putting a 460, 429, and 460 Ford in anything Ford, hit those guys up. They've got uh, conversion kits for them for sure. They should have a clutch kit in there too. But they've got, uh, they've got it. So we've got the intake sitting on there. But we're waiting on some silicone heater hose. I didn't have any good silicone hose. I just have a regular rubber hose, so we got a little short jumper there. I think we're going to go ahead and put the valve covers on there to keep some of the dust and dirt out of there. Hunter thinks he's got all the rockers all adjusted right, right? Yeah. Good not, thing not my motor. When do you want to prime the wool system up? You want to do that now or later? Whenever you we do it now, we might be able to see some wool come up here. You want to try that? Sure. We can take this intake off. We'll see if we can get a drive shaft. So the Oil pump dries off the end of the distributor here. We'll uh, see if we can get a tool in there and uh, get her primed up here. All right, we're pouring some Summit VDDP braking oil in here. We've got a uh, adapter on the shaft down there. Pour one more cord in it, Hunter, and that should be enough to get it primed. Okay. Alright, Hunter's got the uh, Hercules drill in there. How fast you want me to go? Uh, you can go pretty fast. The question is, are you going the right way? I don't know which way it goes. Can we try the other way a little bit? Sure, it sounded like it was gurgling in there. Did you hear it? Oh shoot! What do you got? Oil coming out the. Oh, they got to put an oil filter on there, baby. Don't worry about that part. <laughs> yeah, it helps when you when you put an oil filter in the oil filter hole. We'll be back after these important uh, filter installs. Hey, Bob. We got her to work. We got a filter on there now. Are you ready to prime it? I, I bet you won't have oil going everywhere. Keep her on reverse, right? Yep. Now we got oil coming up. Go slow. Keep going. Go with oil on each one of these. Keep going. You got a paper towel. Oh, okay. Oil. You're going to make a mess. I think you got it, Bubby. This is going to be the last place that gets oil pressures up the top. So. so that come all the way up through those lifters up there. Tiny holes ported out there. Isn't that cool? Wait. Huh? How, how does it get through oil through the lifters? There's a hole in that push rod. They're hollow. There's a little tiny hole in I the end of that. From the lifters. It's not that full. There's a galley in there. Oh. Those plugs you put in, it went through there. That's an oil galley. Gotcha. A squeeze. So it goes through your main bearings first. Shoots up through your cam bearings and then comes up here. So this is really the last place it gets oil. But you take this out. Yeah, I say you're golden, golden, golden. Oh. That oil over here dripping outside. Oh my gosh. I like it. You like it? Yeah. If you guys remember in the last video, we made a little mod for the uh, distributor gear. New. Oh yeah. You guys can see it squirting down in there. Definitely squirting. Okay. Got her, you got her. So we put that little hole in there to uh, help with the uh, distributor gear uh, oiling, so I like it. We got these cork gaskets in the kit, and I don't really like those. We may try to find some different ones. What do you got there? Some more shiny goodness? Shiny goodness. It's looking good. I kinda kind of hate it. I mean, I, I, I love it, but... You don't like covering up your I nice rockers, like, do you? Yeah, I don't like seeing those it is, rockers. It here. is pretty under there. So I had to go with the tall valve covers to clear the big old roller rockers, right? Yeah. Um, I'm going to look up and see if we can find you some uh, regular rubber valve cover gaskets. I'm not a big fan of the cork gaskets. They tend to squeeze out and leak. I mean, we could glue them in there, but... We'll see if they offer anything else. 
I go ahead and set those on there and get your insect set on there so you can keep the dirt out of it for the day because your brother's over there making a big old racket and mess. Are you actually cleaning your paint guns for once? No. Oh, are you being replaced in there? Yeah. Has anybody seen uh, Tucker's Tucker's picture? Yes. He signed that for me. That kind of looks like your handwriting. No, he signed it. Kevin took a picture of Tucker and framed it. No, he signed it. Alright, I think I hear Hunter in here painting. These are the inner fenders and the bumper brackets. Primer on. Hey, Bob. How you doing? Getting her in. I got your gaskets on there. Get your hose started. What are you doing to my employees? <laughs> I'm building them up. I'm giving them a little light at the end of the tunnel for this Friday. I told him he's replaced. By Hunter? No. By who? Hunter. Oh, my Hunter. <laughs> hey. Hey. Nice hat. Nice hat. My super clean hat? Super I'm clean. waiting. We're supposed to get some CNC equipment hats like so this. I told you, everybody likes American camouflage hats. So how's your painting going, Hunter? You're just jumping around, you got two coats of paint over, letting it tack up. It comes over and I got the manifold ready for him to go on. Just jumping around, aren't you? Yeah. What you gotta do, stay busy. He's getting the uh, intake torqued down. Let it dry and you gotta go back and put another coat of paint on, don't you? Alright. Sounds like fun. Did she say the super clean hats were the win? I'm trying to get her to get hats like this, but that says CNC equipment. Super clean sense of products. The purple grows it off. Yeah. Super clean sense of products is not driving me up, but I do like their hat. All right. All right, we're over here at the fuel tank land. Playing Radio Shack. Radio Shack. This is a fuel tank that we built. It wasn't in a high boy video. It was in the plasma cutter video. So. Guys, we built this thing from scratch. We've got a electronic fuel injection fuel pump on it. We went ahead and put all of our lines on there. Uh, Kevin's working on extending the sending unit. We put a couple plugs in here so we can literally drop it down and unplug it. We're kind of like professionals. That's right. So I think we're going to sling it up here next. It's getting late on Friday, so we're going to sling it up while me and Hunter's got some extra help. And uh, we may wait and put that motor in tomorrow. But uh, he did just get some wheels in. So this truck originally had some 16 by 6 inch wide wheels or super narrow so these are actually factory ford wheels but they're 16 by 7 so a little bit wider on that so might well get those put on there and mounted and should be looking good i also got the rear bumper off of it uh, we got it straight and we're going to paint it back to factory silver color i don't know if hunter's painting these wheels a factory silver color or leaving this near gray color but they're going to look pretty sharp either way
All right, Mr. Hunter is mounting up tires and wheels, aren't you? Yep. You got your wheels all painted yesterday. We went with the uh, factory argent silver color, isn't that right? Yeah. <clears throat> he painted bumper too yesterday, but he wants to mount up tires, don't you? Yeah, it's a little warm in here. A little warm? We've got it on the balance machine. These are BF Goodrich, uh, what size are they? 295, 75R16. They're about 33 inches tall. Ten and a half inches wide or so. How close is it gonna be? I can't be. The last one was like one. perfect. Yeah. And the last one was off just a half ounce on the inside. We're using new aftermarket wheels from Dorman. Oh. That one's not real happy. <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything. You may have to um that's quite a bit of weight, but we could always uh, dismount it and turn it too. It's always when you turn the camera on. Yeah. All right, we're gonna get the rest of these mounted, and uh, we got one more left. Get them bounced. And you're gonna stick them on, right? Mm -hmm. Then maybe here in a bit we'll put the uh, big block in there. You ready? Yeah. All right, this is the one that we just showed you on camera. It wouldn't bounce very close. I took it over on the tire machine. Uh, dismount and spun it 180 degrees on the rim. Curious to see if it uh, does any better this time. What do you think? I'm hoping it does. Let's find out. Oh my. It didn't help it none. Uh -uh. <laughs> Well, interesting. I guess you could throw some weights on it and throw that one on the back. It's weird. We had some. One was uh, perfect on the outside and a half on the inside, half ounce. The rest of them has been like two, two and a half ounces out. But Must be something going on with that wheel or something. Just an old truck, right? That's right. She'll be fine. All right, we're going to stick these on here next. What do you think? I think it looks good. Um, looking good, looking good. Looks stock. Factory. Factory. I think that little one inch wider wheel looks a little better on there. Should be looking good. Get her set down on the ground and get a motor in her. All right, so I'm using the uh, mock rotary lifts here to jack her up and down so Hunter doesn't scratch his hubs. You can go up a lot, bub. You probably have to get your head out of there. Yeah. Let's see if we can go up here. And I'll come back down slowly. Too much down. Oh, there, bub. More down? Yeah. Go down. Get you much more perfect than that, bub. All right, we'll get these last two on here, and then uh, we can put her underneath her own weight. She's not been on her own weight for a while. Then next step is we're going to get this transmission right here behind me mounted up to that dude over there, and hopefully stick it in here before lunch. All right, we got the engine off the stand. Um, we're gonna start putting the uh, flywheel and stuff on, but this old uh, engine plate come off the 351, modified. The bolt pattern's the same, but I knew this would be an issue. The crankshaft, where it slides over the crankshaft here, is a little bit uh, different size. So we're gonna set this thing up on our plasma table and cut this round radius out here, make it nice and sweet. I do know L and L sells these, but. Uh, wasn't no sense paying for it when we can just uh, modify this in a little bit we'll just cut that out there about a five and a quarter inch circle I believe so Hunter's already over there drawing it up and uh, we'll get this on there got her clutch and stuff over there and we'll be 
rocking and rolling shortly. What you doing over here, Bubby? Gonna make me a circle. Make you a circle. Lay that down there. Okay, we'll get us a circle drawn up here and see if we can cut her out. How's it looking, Bubby? Looks like a nice hole. Alright, I'm gonna shut this thing down. We shouldn't need a plasma cut anything else, should we? All right, we'll go test fit that piece. All right, got her cut. She is fitting very nicely around there. I'm going to, uh, I like the old Ford emblems on here. It's got the old cursive, you guys see that? That's right. Upside down. We gotta paint a little bit of that black right there. It shows, on her. We gotta wire wheel that up, clean that up. Then we can put some parts on. All right, fell on the floor this morning. When I rolled the cart over, the shifter fell on the floor accidentally, Bubby. Uh -huh. okay. All right, we got our uh, flywheel, clutch, and pressure plate from l l Products. I love these stickers they keep sending us. That's right. Um, you ready to put this on there? Mm -hmm. I already put brake cleaner on here and cleaned these surfaces. These so we already put the uh, pilot bearing in the crankshaft here. You uh, ready, Muscles? So I'm guessing this is only going to go on in one orientation. I usually drill these in a weird pattern, so so you can't get them off balance. I'm assuming the logo goes up. I don't know. No. Stop dropping on your steel toe crocs. That's right. Now you get to play the spin game till the holes line up. Mm. Are there? Not quite. Not quite. There's always one off a little bit. There you go. Nope. Huh? No. 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 Oh. <laughs> Dang it. Not it. We'll be back after we get done spinning it around. <laughs> it's gotta be the last yeah, one. Yeah, hold that. It helps when you put that little engine plate on that we've been spending the last half an hour cutting a circle out of first. That's right. It's gotta go behind there. Um, smart people would take a marker and mark this right here so we don't spin it around 800 times again. I got it in my brain. Okay. You're gonna have to put this on though. Yeah, I can take this. That one bolt's still on there. Okay. Put this on here like so. Got it. Now you can put that back on there. You got the cart in front of the horse, Sammy. Now everybody's gonna call you Sammy. That's fine. They don't even know my name in the first place. All right, we'll get that on there and we'll get the bolts torqued here in a second. Alright, we'll get the torque wrench out on those, torque those. Got that where she's slides in. AB. She's snug. Alright, how's it looking? Looking like Give those a torqueage and we're ready to slam the transmission on it, Bubby. Yeah, it's right too. It's gotta be painted too. Alright, got some new bolts. Hunter wants some nice shiny hardware, 7 16 bolts. You uh, need to go up with your engine hoist here, Bubby. Lock in flat on it. Yep. Okay.
got her slid together. It went together pretty easy. Check that. Right, those two we got to leave out because we got a clutch bracket. You got those tied over there? Yeah. Okay. We'll take those two out because we got a clutch bracket. It's got to go in after it gets in the truck. What do you think? She's looking good. Yeah. I like the gloss flat. Yep. Right. Starter's got to go in after. Um, we should test fit that starter make sure it does fit. Okay. Before, because I have a late model 90s gear reduction starter. Is it in the stuff it's in a Napa box. Okay. It's right over here, Hunter. We'll make sure that fits before we get it up in the truck. Supposedly, right, the gear reduction starter gives a little more cranking power and takes up a little less room, so it's going to give us more room for our header. So, notice we left our spark plugs out too. We got to get the engine in, then slide the headers up into frame rails. It's a very tight fit, I'm told. So, we got our engine mounts on. These come from uh, Jess Bronco Graveyard. L&L makes some mounts, but uh, let's see if that looks like she's going to work. Lines up with the holes and everything. That's all lined up. Yep, she looks good. Another thing we can do too is put those two flex plate bolts in there. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot smaller than a big starter. Yeah. All right. I have to go back under there. All right. We're ready to stab this thing in here, says Hunter. I actually went to lunch. We think we're ready. We did take the oil filter off. Hunter did. I'm worried about some clearance issues, at least getting it in there. So we got a jack back here to help uh, level things up. What do you think, forklift operator? Oh, are you ready? I'm ready if you're ready. Sure. Let's see if she fits. Go down a little. 
down. Whoop. Come on down a little. Down, down. Whoop. Down a little bit more. Come on down like Bob Barker. <laughs> Hunter's complaining about my forklift hey, it's in here. skills. And somebody even complained about my hand signs. Can you believe that? That pole you right there? That one? Apparently, I had some. I'm, I'll stick a photo up. <laughs> Apparently, I do this with my hands all the time, and it's like bad. And he said it's a lot of bad things. I don't know what people. People are thinking sending emails. Did I tell you about that? Yeah, I, I read it. Oh, something, word. something that what did what did it say? I'm a lunatic and you're crazy. We're dementia and yeah, me and Captain Cleman, I guess, both do it. So we're all. What do you call? I, I'll have to pull it up. You guys, take a look at it and see what you think. I, I don't understand why people send emails like that. They guess they don't have nothing else to do. Yeah. All right, she's in there. Looks we gotta good. get the transmission up. Cross member in. Went in there pretty easy, didn't it? It did. I think it's looking good for sure. Looking good, looking good. I like it. You like it? I like it. Hey, that oil filter's gonna fit just fine. That's Here, I've been concerned the whole time. You could go ahead and put it back on. We'll probably wait till we get the motor mount bolts tight. Yeah. All right. It's gonna work out good. You like it? I do. I like it. Looks pretty. Um. Yeah. Let's get that cross mirror cross member in there next I guess all right we was able to unhook the forklift that transmission sitting on that one cross member we're just gonna pick it up in the air and uh, do everything from underneath you ready yep. uh, wireless lifts going up you got a big old mess around here you know that got our cross member and our trans new transmission mount. I see an old one here. Set this back down on the locks. There we go. Got that thing all painted ready to go. You guys can see it's all dark and black under here. We got a light. Hunter's got everything painted and undercoated under here. That's the uh, hole up through the floor for the shifter. We've got to put a cross member in here and get it bolted in here next. We get a big yellow jack stain we'll put under here. Unless you're going to manhandle this whole assembly up. She looks heavy, Bubby. All right, we got the cross member in there. I didn't do much filming. Like I say, it's dark up here. Using new hardware and everything. We get this tightened up, we'll go up. Tighten the motor mount bolts down up front. Double check, make sure everything's looking good. I'm liking what I see so far. I'll put those pig mats down so we didn't scratch nothing up. Got good clearance on our oil pan. That's an oil pan off the uh, original motor off my shop truck. Yeah, she's coming along. I think the next stage is what, headers? We said we we're gonna fit some headers in there. So they're gonna be a tight fit. in there that is its final resting ground hopefully hopefully if you did everything right <laughs> only thing yeah. that's not right is the lift for the rockers probably the rockers because you did that all by yourself yeah i bet you got it figured out all right i think we better get that clutch linkage in there then uh see what the headers look like fun part we'll you gonna see if the l and l headers fit we got the uh clutch linkage all in here. I think we got it adjusted right. What side do you want? Uh, don't matter to me. That's the easy side. You want to do it first? Let's do it last. Okay. 
We may have to put that starter in first over here too. There's not much room over here on these high boys at all. Supposedly these fit, so this company's been making them since the 70s. Got nice half inch thick flanges. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but so far all their products have been nice. We got the clutch and the flywheel from them. Got this alternator bracket kit from them. And waiting on the power steering bracket kit. It should be in pretty soon from them. But they sell everything. Conversion, they sell complete turnkey, every little nut and bolt you need if you need it. It's looking good. Looking good? Can you hold that real quick? Yep. We've got to put an O2 sensor in here somewhere for your. Hey, Bob. Did it fit? No. No. She's there. Oh, yeah. Barely. Cleared the clutch. What, uh. I'm curious what happens when you push the clutch in. Can you try it? Yeah. I'll kind of hold it up where it goes. I guess it goes the other way. Yeah, you're good. They fit, but that's it. All right, we'll get uh, bolts. We'll put anti-seize on the bolts and uh, gaskets. We'll Too smoothly right now. Don't get that stuff on you. <laughs> oh, did you do it already? No, I would just put washers on. You didn't on put there. the lock washer on. So L and L gave us these uh, header bolts, the ones that come with our ARP bolt kit are way too short because they got these big old thick flanges. I'm going to put the outside two in first and the gasket is um, notched for those I believe. actually have helical inserts in them. So. Alright, got that side on. Hunter's got all the spark plugs in there too. Put anti-seize on those. We left the spark plugs out because we didn't know if he's going to interfere with the header installation, but they really don't. These 460s. So, we're putting in our little gear reduction starter here. Nice and compact. Hunter's getting the last bolt tightened on it. And we'll see if these headers fit over here. What do you think? I think so. So far, so good. Mm. Y'all fit? That's right, like a dream. One header. They got those made pretty nice. They fit in there nice and dandy. Plenty of room on the starter. We can still get to the uh, terminals. Nasty, nasty. nasty. Alright, we're going to get the rest of those little bolts in there then uh, figure out our next game plan. What is it? I don't know. I'm liking it so far. She's fitting nicely. It's almost like they done this at the factory. Mr. Hunter's putting in some Autolite spark plugs. So you got them gapped at 44, 40, 45 thousandths. Yeah. Sticking those in. Got the header tightened up. I'm happy with the way all that stuff's fitting. We've got clearance for the motor to rock. The only issue we've got so far, it's always going to be an issue, the brake booster is hitting our big old tall Ford Racing valve covers. Dang it, Bob. Now what are we going to do about that? Guys don't know what the brake booster is. It sits right here. It's vacuum assisted. Gives you a little extra boost for the master cylinder. I would like to not have to touch the valve covers. So I'm going to do a little research and see. Right now we have 11 inch booster. Maybe we can, if we go down to like a 10, we'll have enough. It, so it will fit right now, but it's rubbing that valve cover hard. And you know that motor's going to rock too. So um, 
motor turns, I think, counterclockwise, so I guess it's going to kind of hunch away from it, so that would help some. Yeah. But uh, if we can get it like a 10 inch one, I think we might well make it work, or we're going to change the valve covers, or cut a little notch in the valve cover. Not cut no notch, bub. Well, you and your big tall Ford racing valve covers. We kind of had to go with those those roller rockers. I'm not sure if a factory style will fit or not, but we're going to do some research. So we're going to lift this thing back up in the air. We've got to put the little short drive shaft in the transmission. Uh, transmission shifter's got to go in. A bunch of little odds and ends. It's kind of hard and boring to film. So, But uh, we're going to wrap this one up. We've got plenty more stuff to do in this thing, don't we? Oh, gosh. We've got the fuel tank still got to go in it. We didn't get that in. The fuel injection system. Um, we've got radiators, front core support. We got all kinds of stuff. We got spark plug wires. What else we got? Oh, we got to build a whole exhaust system for it too. Power steering pump. Power steering pump. Exhaust is going to take a while. You're going to have to learn how to TIG weld because your brother's gone on vacation. Yeah. You've got one more week of school left, so. We've one, got one week of summer left. One week of summer left, that's what I meant to say. You've got what about four or five? I guess we got about six days of work time. Four or five, six days, I don't know. Five or six. I you're taking off one. Done. Hopefully we get it running. That's gonna be in the next video, is what we're trying to say. But we've got a big old mess to clean up and a whole bunch of parts to still stick on there, so but Hunter, I am happy with the way it's turning out. It's looking sharp, so but uh, you guys want to see this thing fire up and hopefully drive around, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video because it's going to be epic. It's going to sound good for sure, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I can't wait to hear it run. Well, you're going to a motor group. Here's a scramble race tomorrow, so we can't work on it. That's too bad. Too bad. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a hard decision. So, Oil filter fit in there just fine after you got everything in. So, Yeah, it's going to be a sweet little running truck for sure. I like the tire and wheel situation. Yeah. One, inch One inch wider wheel and pretty much tire, so it's going to be looking good. Well, if you guys like this video today, do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up button down below. Click that thing. It lets, uh, lets us know we're doing our job. And the big thing is it lets YouTube know that we're doing our job. So it gets our videos out there so more people watch it. And we can do more stuff like this because this stuff costs a lot of money, doesn't it? No. You're broke. So the more you guys watch, the more it helps Hunter out here. So make yes. sure you guys please watch. Yeah, please watch the video, share, and uh, all that stuff. So and make sure you subscribe so you can see this little bad boy running around here in the next video. Hopefully, as long as you did everything right. I think I did. We hope so. We appreciate everybody watching, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Hopefully, with a running truck, maybe.